so this is our route for today. We are starting here at the uh, Kellogg's Nature Visitor Center here in the National Park. This is the green area. And we're going to work our way through here. This path is supposed to be newly renovated, which ascends. And there is a kota called Vark, a place called Varkankuru. And then uh, we are going to come back along the trail and then back to the visitor center. Hi hey folks, Kevin here again. Yeah, starting a bit later this afternoon, so I'm just going to do a shorter walk. Uh, the path today is called Varkan Kuru. Again, it's a kuru is this sort of gully or gorge that comes steeply down the side of a mountain. The route is quite short, maybe four kilometers long, but um, it'll take me on a trail that I haven't been before, and uh, I can stop for a break at the uh, kota or traditional wooden building with a central fire pit um, about halfway along the trail. Welcome along on another Lapland adventure. I'm really enjoying doing these day hikes because I can carry so much less and uh, my hiking speed is a, a lot faster. So currently I'm descending into a valley. The trail is dropping down quite steeply and in the distance I can hear a river flowing. So I guess that would be the low point of the valley or this gully, gorge. And uh, from there the trail will probably start to rise again. Apparently this part of the trail was uh, renovated just this summer and uh, they replaced the original duck boards, which had become quite worn, with uh, wider duck boards, which also have a metal grill in the middle. This was to keep people on the actual path where they wanted people to walk. Duck boards are notorious for being quite slippery when wet, so by having the metal grill in the middle of the duck board, uh, the grip is a whole lot better. There are signs all around this trail telling us that we are now in a restricted zone. What that basically means is they want you to stay to the actual marked path and not make your own trails. And it's an attempt to try and control the tourist impact on such an ecologically sensitive area. had a thought. The landscape and the river running down through the valley reminds me of the start, starting phase of the game Skyrim. I half expect to see a, a wolf come around the corner any second. Here's an example of one of many small little streams feeding down off the hill and they pass under the boardwalk, drain up another small spring and then just over there is the main stream that comes down. So I could imagine that uh, in heavy rain this place is probably quite flooded and has quite a strong current coming down the hill. We have a couple of very large pine trees that have fallen down and they've fallen across the path. Obviously this renovation hasn't happened since because they've chopped them. But as you look around you realise that there are lots of down trees that are just left to rot. This is done deliberately to encourage species of uh, fungi and also various species, some of which are endangered, uh, beetle species and other insect species that bore into the wood and lay their larvae inside. So it might look a little bit chaotic but it's actually deliberately done to promote natural di diversity within the area. As most hikers know there's a concept in Japan of forest bathing. The idea being that when you're out in the nature, especially in the forest, 
the trees give off essential oils and other compounds to the air which is when you breathe in or as you walk through the forest it does you good and uh, yeah I can attest that uh, this place is definitely a good candidate for forest bathing because the air here is oh so fresh and so cle clear it's absolutely beautiful I just came up a rather steep valley and I'm not tired at all in fact if anything I feel refreshed So here we are arriving at Varkan Kuru Kota. So let's go and have a look. Okay, so this is the inside of a kota. It's uh, based on a traditional Sami wooden hut. Uh, this one I counted actually has 10 sides, not 8 as I thought. And uh, Yes, it has this nice fire pit in the center that you can grill your sausages on or indeed cook food. Around the walls of the kota are wide benches, so in principle you could sleep in here at night. It's a really nice place to come and get out of the wind at any time of the year, but particularly in winter if you've been skiing. And the wood is provided by the National Park. Along the trail are scattered these information boards that tell you all about the plants, wildlife, habitats, etc. And uh, it's always nice to stop and have a little read and uh, get some more information about what you're actually seeing. Okay, it's now about five o'clock and um, it's going to get dark in a couple of hours. So I think I might uh, wrap it up for here for the Varkan Guru Trail. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, as always, if you liked it, leave a like maybe down below comment your comments will be very welcome and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next trail so until then I'll see you tomorrow all the best bye bye